Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kika and this is week seven of my photo challenge series. And today we're gonna continue talking about Instagram, but today we're gonna focus on the captions. How often have you been ready to post a photo? You're feeling good, you've been editing it, you put in some effort and then you come to that place where you should write something about it, put some words to it and it's just blank and uh, you don't know what to say essentially. Um, this can be a really tricky pickle. Turn myself into a pickle, Morty! Boom! Big reveal, I'm a pickle. What do you think about that? I turned myself into a pickle! Sometimes um, you have a story already in mind or you have something you want to share, but those moments where you don't know what to say, it can feel so contrived and forced and it can just be really um, almost like you can't even post a photo just because you don't know what to say. So that's why I'm making this video with some very actionable and strategic tips also to get some more engagement and building community on your Instagram account because Instagram is not just a place where we want to be tooting our own horn and just announcing things, but you also want to open up for some dialogue and to make people feel they are included and heard. So these ideas are gonna do exactly that. Before we dive into the actual ideas, I want to go over four things, um, sort of the basics of the Instagram captions. So we're gonna talk about what is a good length, where is the line between too personal and not personal enough, Thirdly, direct is better than cryptic or vague. And the fourth, where to place your hashtags. So first of all, what is a good length? On Instagram, the maximum caption length you can have is 2,200 characters. That's a lot of characters. That is almost a little mini novel already. <laughs> but actually I find that very long captions, let's be honest, most people, they do not read them. They're just gonna skip ahead. So I would say you definitely don't want to just put an emoji in there. Um, you still want to make your caption count. I mean, it is a place really an invitation, an opportunity connect, to connect with people. So I think it would be foolish to not use that. Generally, I tend to go for 10 to between, or between 10 and 15 lines. Um, so still that it's quite short, but still there, there is some meat on the bone. So it's not just a one liner, even though with some photos, I think that can work well, but I think you just want to keep it pretty short and kind of hit that sweet spot. Next, where is the line between too personal and not personal enough? I think it's very important on social media that we are authentic and we're trying to be our own selves. Um, and I think people find it more relatable when you're actually sharing something that is vulnerable and it's not all about sharing these shiny lives. But what I would recommend is to still open up for some dialogue and asking questions is a great way to do this. So instead that it becomes just like your mini monologue show, asking for questions or people's advice or their opinions or their experiences is a great way to ensure that you're keeping it personal and you're sharing your experience, but then you're also inviting others into the conversation. Direct is better than vague and cryptic. Sometimes I see Instagram captions where it's a fancy quote or maybe it's a poem or maybe it's something that feels very irrelevant to the actual photo. And this can be very confusing and feel very cryptic. And if you don't immediately understand what it's about, the likelihood is again that most people will skip over it because, well, that attention span of our generation is uh, famously not very long. So I would instead keep it quite direct and keep it in that tone that you talk to a friend or your normal way of speaking instead of trying to use very fancy words or explain things in really complicated ways. Try to be quite direct, keep it quite short and concise. Uh, I think that's a better way and people will more likely than read your caption. And lastly, hashtags. So on Instagram, you can use max 30 hashtags and there's a lot of debate on how many you should be using, what sort of the optimal amount. I found one article stating that 11 hashtags is the best amount to use. Uh, I myself usually use around 10 to 15, but um, yeah, the question, where should you place their hashtags? I usually place my hashtags in a comment instead of in the caption because if you write a caption and then you have all the hashtags there it can just look a little cluttered this is a matter of taste maybe it doesn't uh, bother so many or uh, some people so much i myself like it to keep it quite clean so then i will just put the hashtags in a comment and then the hashtags will still be searchable and you'll pop up in those hashtags 
Um, there are a lot of things we could talk about hashtags. So if you'd like me to make a separate video about those, let me know in the comments below and I will definitely do that. Um, all about what hashtags to use, how to target them, how to get discovered by hashtags. There was this whole rumor at some point that the hashtags were broken and you couldn't be found using hashtags. So all of those things. Um, yeah, if you'd like me to make a video about that, then please let me know. There's more than meets the eye, share the story behind the photo. The most natural thing to do when you're posting a photo on Instagram is to share the story behind it. What was going on when you were taking this photo? Was there something funny that happened that maybe isn't obvious in the frame itself? How could you make the viewer feel even more invited into what is happening in the photo and make that world around it even more rich and filled with detail and depth? Often when I do my photos, something uh, not so great might happen behind the scenes. <laughs> I was taking this photo, for example, even though it looks pretty and nice, I got this huge burn mark on this dress. So I decided to include that into the caption because it also brings it all down a little bit more to earth and it makes it more relatable, I think. Helping out a friend, asking for advice and thoughts. I think one of the biggest misconceptions on being on social media is that we should just show the fancy bits, the shiny things when we've accomplished something. But I think actually when you reach out and ask for advice or you're thinking about something and you want people's feedback or maybe somebody else's perspective on something, that's a great way to just build that trust and community and will also give so much back to yourself when you have something that maybe you're struggling with. In general, people want to be part of the conversation and giving them a chance to do that and actually also allowing people to feel that they can help you out and bring some value to you and just to the community that will maybe form around that caption and around that post and whatever topic it is. That's a super valuable way to use this space and to use those little lines in this app. Dare to reach out asking for opinions and feedback. Another great way to invite people more into your journey and make them feel a part of your story is to post a carousel and ask for people's favorite edits or feedback on something that you're working on. When I was working on my merch designs, I would ask people what photo they would like to see on a print and I got an overwhelming response and feedback on that. I think it made people really feel a part of the creative process and also that they had a voice and that they could affect the outcome of this thing I was working on. Then did the same when my prints were ready and I posted all of them in a carousel and asked which print were everyone's favorite and got people really excited and created some buzz around that and just this feeling of community and excitement around my new designs. A public diary-ish entry what's been on your mind recently. Often there are a lot of things that we go around thinking about and are on our minds, but we can sometimes be unable to see them because they feel so close. But I've actually found that when it's something that I'm going through at the moment and it's something that I'm actually thinking about a lot. So writing a little caption about that, a little story, maybe again asking for if people have some experiences that are similar to mine can be a great way to reach out. And it doesn't have to be an epic story or something that it's now you have all the answers figured out. It can actually be very everyday small things and those will usually be very relatable. Laughter is the best medicine, so sprinkle in some humor in there. If you have a funny story or something silly happened or even a pun, add it in. I think is really nice to keep it quite lighthearted and sort of that you can laugh at yourself or at life. I mean, humor is really the spice of it all. And especially now, I think we need it more than ever to just get through this time. So if you have something funny to share, uh, then definitely do that in a caption and do spend some time thinking about the rhythm and how you structure the caption that, that becomes really obvious. And yeah, it's just so nice if you can bring a smile to somebody's day, bring a little positivity and joy. Make sense of it all, make your life events into a list. Now, I've always loved making lists and I feel it's just a good way to try to organize things into something that I can understand. And also on Instagram caption, I think it's nice sometimes to share a little list 
and it could be maybe of some highlights of your day or some things that have happened recently and just making a little list and sometimes you could also uh, introduce yourself via a list and ask people to do the same so just break up sort of the normal kind of caption and just structure it a little bit and I think lists also maybe helps you think in a little bit of different ways and again you just get some organization around things. Take the stage. Announce something but remember to make it engaging. If there's something that has recently happened in your life you can make a little announcement. Maybe you've just graduated or you moved house or maybe you've just bought a new plant. <laughs> so it could also be a small announcement. You can make that into a little story and share it and again remember to keep in two-way streets so keep it engaging by asking people if they have similar experiences and always remember to try to keep it so open that people actually want to join in on the conversation and especially I've found that when I've talked about moving because I've moved many times <laughs> in the last few years I always feel that that sparks up a big conversation because that's a very topic that is very close to many people and I think it evokes a lot of emotions because moving is quite stressful and I don't know I think houseplants could be the same or maybe graduating or like bigger life events that usually will trigger some kind of response in your audience. Positive vibes share something uplifting. You know how sometimes when you're having a little bit of a gray day and then you go on social media and maybe you find a really nice quote or a really nice photo and it just brings up your spirits. So sometimes if you're in the mood for that or you have something nice to share um, and you're just feeling like you're having like the best day and you have all these positive vibes, um, it's nice to share that. It doesn't have to always necessarily be so profound and deep. Sometimes it can just be that desire to bring some positivity into someone else's day. We're all just learning. Share a tip or something you learned. People are always on the lookout to learn new tricks and tips and hacks or recipes so if you have something that you recently learned or a discovery or just, I don't know, some interesting unusual facts, that's also a really nice place to share that in an Instagram caption because what's better than learning something new? Um, and I feel like there's a lot of information that we maybe don't need but if it can be something useful or something entertaining then absolutely put that in an Instagram caption. Dare to be dramatic. Share a memory or a life-changing experience. So every once in a while I go through these moments where I reflect a lot and just thinking about these things that actually shaped me as a human so it's a bit of a epic moment um, and sometimes it's nice to then wrap that into a story and maybe share the biggest takeaway from that or just what shaped you so um, I remember as a child for example getting a little sister when I was six years old because I had really really been wanting to get uh, a sister or a brother to play with, somebody to have at home so that I wouldn't be the only child and that was a huge thing I remember back for me then. Obviously that's a memory that's very far away from now but um, sometimes sharing something that was pretty big because I also think that Sometimes we can, or I at least, can sometimes be a little afraid to make it very epic or share these like big things because it feels like, oh, this is maybe overly dramatic or I'm being somehow, I don't know, taking up too much space maybe. I I'm not sure that you make your life into something epic when it's not so epic most of the time, if we're honest. But then, yeah, every once in a while it can be nice to just look at back maybe at some milestones some things that changed you and again get some conversation around that because most likely other people will have had similar experiences. And then lastly, Busy Bee, what are you working on right now? Share something that you're working currently on, something that is still a work in progress and that it's not done yet. This is super good if you have a shop or you're preparing a product or something that you're gonna launch or when I was gonna start my YouTube channel I also kept mentioning it on Instagram and I think people are very curious to see what you're working on. It creates this excitement and expectation so then when you actually launch this thing there is already some buzz and some hype around it so this is a super super powerful way to also market your stuff and even if it's not something that is going to be paid for just seeing your journey again I think it's nice and inviting people into behind the scenes so they get to know you more and connect with you more on a deeper level. 
Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this tips gave you some ideas that you can use in your Instagram captions. So next time when you don't know what to say, you can go through this list or come back to this video and think of maybe one of these ideas is something that actually at the moment you have something to say about and share in an Instagram caption. Another good idea is actually also when you really feel in the flow and you have sort of a lot of things to maybe put in the apps, no, apps notes, notes app <laughs> on your phone or jot it down in a journal, just some topics, or some captions so for those moments when you just feel blank and you have absolutely nothing to say you have some ideas to go to thank you so much for watching uh, again my video this is week seven of kika's photo challenge if you don't know what that is all about you can go check that out in the well in the video below the description below and also on the hashtag kika's photo challenge out on instagram also, if you didn't watch last week's video with some things that I wish I would have known when I started Instagram, do make sure and go check that one out and let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to make a video about hashtags and more about just how to find your audience and tribe on Instagram and I'll be happy to make that as well. I will see you back here on Thursday for week seven's photo challenge. So remember to comment watch this space on Thursday again uh, and come say hi. I'm over at Kutubakika on Instagram if you aren't already uh, or if we aren't connected already over there as well. All right, now I'm gonna say thank you for the third or fourth time. Thank you and I will see you on Thursday. Bye. There's a bee in my bonnet, hello, hello. A bee in my bonnet, hello. <laughs> There's a bee in my bonnet, hello, hello, a bee in my bonnet, hello. There's a bee in my bonnet, hello, hello, a bee in my bonnet, hello.